Oh, the terrorists of Hamas clearly intent on killing as many Israelis as possible. And critics point out also causing untold casualties among the citizens of Gaza, even as more Hamas rockets are raining down on the Jewish state. You know, the terror from the sky has forced the Israeli military to ramp up its offensive against Hamas. Israeli airstrikes leveling three buildings in Gaza City today in what is reportedly the deadliest single attack since the fighting broke out, as the Hamas offensive also is larger than the recent conflicts. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fox News Live. I'm Eric Shaw. Hi, Arthel. Hello, Eric, and hello, everyone. I'm Arthel Neville. Gaza health officials say over 40 Palestinians were killed in the latest Israeli strikes, including 16 women and 10 children. Meanwhile, Hamas says it has fired nearly 3,000 rockets into Israel. The Biden administration calling for swift de-escalation, but Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the military campaign will continue in full force for as long as necessary. Thousands of rockets and missiles on our cities, uh, and I think any country uh, has to defend itself. It has a natural right of self-defense. Let's go to Trey Yanks now. He is live on the Israel-Gaza border. Trey. Arthel, good afternoon. Heavy Israeli airstrikes overnight as the factions inside Gaza fired on Israel's second largest city, Tel Aviv. Now, the Israeli security cabinet did meet today, and reports about that meeting indicate that Israel is not interested in a ceasefire at this time. We are getting some new images out of Gaza that show immense damage to much of the strip, with the death toll rising there. There are new questions today about why Israel targeted an apartment building with many civilians inside. 42 Gazans were killed since yesterday evening, bringing the death toll there close to 200. In Israel today, southern cities saw heavy rocket fire. A synagogue that was preparing for Shavuot was hit with a rocket. And I want to stay with you here. Arthel, we are getting some rocket fire in right now. And you can see Israel's missile defense system behind me. The Iron Dome working right now to try to intercept those rockets. I'm going to get down here. And just listen, you're going to hear an explosion any second now. Interception. There it is. Everyone stay down. And another. And back to me. So, Arthel, that's an example of what Israel has been dealing with all day. Earlier, we were at a synagogue that took a direct hit very close to here in the city of Ashkelon. A rocket slipped by the Iron Dome missile defense system, slamming into that religious site. Take a look at the scene. I hope the world see what happened here in this synagogue. They don't want to stop. They never stop. They just want to kill us. You can see the massive hole in the ceiling of this rabbi's bedroom. Earlier today, a rocket slammed into the house. Cut out of the package. You can see Arthel, we're going to get back to that story later on, but there are a number of interceptions right now in southern Israel. The Iron Dome slamming into these rockets fired from the Gaza Strip as these sirens blare off in the distance. Interception right there. The factions inside Gaza trying to send a message to the Israeli government that they are not interested in a ceasefire. Last night was considered a major escalation by the Israelis. We did speak with the head of Israel's home front command, who said this operation is nowhere close to over. The United Nations today calling for de-escalation by both sides as the civilian casualty in Gaza continues to rise. I also spoke with a representative of UNICEF today who told Fox News there are nine Gazan children missing amid the rubble. Arthel? Trey, it, it's extraordinary to see the Iron Dome in action live here on television as you report this story there from the Israel-Gaza border. But really struck me is that because I know you and I, you're doing your job, so this is what you do. But because I know you and I'm, I'm friends with you, um, it, it made me really realize the human uh, peril that's happening there. Of course, you didn't get hurt, but I was so concerned for you. So talk to me more now, Trey, if you will, about the people people there on the ground who you've spoken to who are living this nightmare right now. Arthel, so often these stories are about weapons and rockets and interception rounds, 
But the people on the ground are the real story, not only here in Israel, but also inside Gaza. We've spent days and days during other conflicts and even during times of peace inside Gaza, talking with the Gazans. And most people you talk to here in southern Israel and inside Gaza have a lot in common. It's their militaries and governments that disagree on what the world should look like here. I think back to a time in November of 2019, we were the only crew inside Gaza when days of fighting erupted. And I remember going to this man in Gaza City who owned a paper store. And I asked him, what do you think about Hamas and this conflict and all this rocket fire and the airstrikes overnight? And he looked at me and he said, I'm just trying to sell paper. And that really, I think, stands out in my mind as an example of the types of people we meet covering these conflicts because they're humans. They want to get home to their families and have a, a meal. They want to talk about their day. They want to maybe go outside and play sports, go to the beach. Uh, but so often the governments and the militias and the militaries involved in these things get in the way of them doing that. And it is sad. There's really no other way to describe it. It's sad to watch people's lives be ruined. And, and oftentimes, the byproduct of these conflicts, as we've seen from those images today inside Gaza, as we saw in that synagogue today, are that people's lives are changed forever. Sometimes they lose a family member. Sometimes they just lose their way of life. Uh, but oftentimes they just lose their sense of peace and their sense of mental calm. And I think that that is really at the core of all of this, what everyone has to remember when we talk about the potential of ceasefire and, and the potential of more rocket fire. It, it comes down to the people. You really are spot on there, Arthel. Thank you, Trey, for pointing that out. Uh, and that's what we all have to remember, the human factor that is at the foundation of all of this. And I believe Eric has a question for you, Trey. Yeah, uh, uh, Trey, you know, this is uh, amazing. I want to put you to put your helmet on in, in case there's any of, of, of that shrapnel. We just saw the Iron Dome in action protecting Israel. Talk to me, uh, talk to us a bit about Hamas, uh, its strategy. It puts its artillery uh, in civilian areas next to these buildings the uh, high-rise that, uh, that housed uh, Associated Press in Al Jazeera, the Israeli military says, and has given the intelligence to the U.S. showing that Hamas also used that as an intelligence uh, center. Uh, the sense that Hamas uses its own people, that they want to use this as propaganda uh, in some cases. What is the sense there on the ground, and what is the sense when you see those Hamas rockets go over your head intercepted by the Iron Dome? Well, look, I think it's difficult when we see these statements by the Israeli military saying that Hamas is hiding weapons or they're hiding intelligence inside tall Gazan high rises, because anyone who's ever reported inside Gaza will tell you that Hamas is everywhere. And the journalists there, especially those from outlets like the Associated Press, are trying to do their job as journalists and cover this conflict in a fair and accurate way. And I think that oftentimes there's a parallel information war going on, not only in Gaza, but also in Israel, as both sides try to win public trust and their own interests in terms of the, the information about what's happening and, and where weapons are and where information centers are. Inside Gaza, we've spoken extensively with Hamas, the group in control of Gaza, and also Islamic Jihad, the second largest faction there. And I, back in 2019, interviewed a senior Hamas official on camera, and I said, look, there are reports and evidence indicating you guys are receiving weapons, money, and support from Iran. And he said, we are. He openly, on the record, said Hamas is receiving support from the Iranian regime in Tehran. But he made a clarification about this point, saying that they would not blindly take orders from the Islamic Republic. And I found that interesting, because when we're not covering this conflict between Israel and Hamas, we often talk about Iran, and there's certainly a player in all of this. Eric? Absolutely a player in this, and that is another excellent point you bring up there, Trey Yanks, in that uh, really extraordinary report there on the Israel-Gaza border. Stay safe, and thank you for that excellent reporting, Trey.